So guys, today I'm going to be going over my wintertime uh, long-term wilderness setup. Before I get into the pack, I'm going to go over what I actually have on me. And I want to do this video because my original long-term wood setup was pretty good. But unfortunately, here, at least here in Alaska, it does get cold enough to the point where you will actually need to have some extra layering. I'm gonna take this pack off here and show you what I'm actually wearing. So to start off, just to get these out of my hands, uh, I'm wearing mittens and these are quite large. These are mastodons uh, and inside of them I have, uh, what are these, Mechanics Winter Armor for gloves. I have them sitting inside this and that's what's inside this one. Uh, and that is what I essentially have for my hands. Now today is actually pretty warm and I really don't need the mittens at all, but I want to bring them out as an example of showing if I was coming out here in a long-term situation, I would definitely have uh, the mittens along with my gloves. Down in the description below, I will include um, descriptions of the different things I'm wearing to the best of my ability um, so you guys can check them out. But aside from the gloves, I'm actually on shoes, I'm wearing uh, military mucklucks, and the reason why I like mucklucks a lot more than uh, what you guys may be familiar with, bunny boots, uh, the reason why I like these a lot more is because the unfortunate part with uh, bunny boots, as they're referred to, is that they use a pressurized air system to keep your feet warm, and in a long-term situation, I really dislike that because should you ever damage the pressurized system or release any of that air, the effectiveness of those boots goes down. About the mucklucks, as opposed to them, is there's no pressurized air system to them. They're very basic in how they work, and what's really nice about them is they are field repairable. You can totally repair like them by the stitching them back. Style mucklucks, they keep your feet extremely warm, but they are completely field repairable. So that is why I chose them in particular for a long-term. Other changes are I've bulked up a lot more in the chest area. And I, of course, I have a full winter coat on with other base layers to help retain heat. Uh, if you're trying to design this personally, you'll have to experiment a lot. That's what I had to do to really find my perfect system. But that so, is, that's why I brought essentially a Columbia full-on winter uh, coat with some base layers. Other than that, what I'm wearing for a neck gaiter slash face mask is, this is an Under Armour. I can't remember what it's quite called, but it's like a tactical face mask. What I really like about it is that it hinges here, so you can wear it as a full-on face mask or a neck gaiter. And in these warmer days like today, it's a really nice neck gaiter, but if it gets colder, uh, I can easily wear it as a full-on face mask. So other than that, I'm just wearing a uh, normal, what is this, a <laughs> Carhartt skull cap and just my normal uh, boomy hat and so nothing overly complex but I find that this system is the first one or just like the first uh, long term wood setup I'm going to show you guys uh, what I run on body or stuff that is not in the pack or on the pack so to start off I have switched up a little bit of course with uh, it being colder out bows especially traditional bows like you guys saw uh, last time can be very prone to getting damaged or actually breaking in the very cold weather. Their limbs can crack or break when it gets significantly cold out. So to kind of defeat that or to not even have that problem really in the beginning, I'm just running the normal 22 and really a lot of people might be surprised for a long-term setup that I've run a 22, but honestly most game can be got with a 22. And I mean, you can take down things as large as fox, coyote, even speculatively larger. But for most of your interactions, you will likely just need a 22. It's really quite good for 99% of what you'll be trying to kill and process. Do keep in mind that, you know, if you're just a one man operating unit, you're not necessarily going to be able to take down, harvest, and properly utilize something like an entire moose or an entire caribou. So to have a rifle that can take those down uh, is a little bit much for uh, being out here as a sole person. This is what I've chosen for the hunting tool. And I'm running around 200 rounds. I'll show you guys how I 
run the ammunition for it in a little bit. Aside from that, what I'm carrying as a large belt knife is, this is a little bit newer, but the Schrade SCHF 42D. I've actually really liked this knife here uh, recently, ever since I got it. It's actually been really awesome. I am running this instead of the Topps Fieldcraft is actually because it has a slightly longer blade length, which means that its batonability if that's even a word, is slightly more because it has it can span greater pieces of wood. And that was something that I really disliked about the Topps Fieldcraft is it was such a large knife, but because the handle and the uh, blade were so equalized, uh, you couldn't really find yourself batoning as large a piece of wood. So now onto the other knife that's running on the body. Of course, I usually carry one belt knife and one neck knife, and I especially would for a long-term situation. It is no longer the faithful and trusty BRK or Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. This is actually the LT Wright Camp Muck, and this is one that I've been using and testing around here of late as well. But I'm really testing this one to see if it could be a replacement for the Bushcrafter, and so far I've been extremely impressed with it. I really like this Nesmic design, and you guys are going to see a lot more videos on this knife to come. But overall, like I was saying, I've really been impressed with it. Its weight and its size are very nice. Of course, this is not the main use batoning knife um, or the heavy duty extreme use knife like the Schrade would be. But this is handles more of the, yeah, it handles most of the uh, smaller fine tasks such as detail carving. So, or, anyways, guys, uh, that is what's running as the primary neck knife in this case. So now to get into what's running on the outside of the backpack. There are a couple of things that are running on the outside of the backpack. And the first is, of course, to be expected, um, the good old GBA. Now here's the GBA Scandinavian Forest Axe. Uh, it's been a very tried and true trooper. It is running right now a neck brace on it. I believe in the last video it was also running a neck brace, but this one's a little bit different. Uh, and then the next thing that's probably quite large and obnoxious that you guys have been sitting here looking at is the tarp. I recently finally got a tarp for bushcrafting, and I've been extremely curious and wanting to test out a lot of different tarp shelters and I've already built one tarp shelter you guys will see that in I don't know whenever I release the video you guys will see that but I've been I was extremely impressed by that tarp shelter or how the tarp was able to integrate into that shelter and so ever since then I've been really wanting to build more tarp shelters so that is one reason why it's on here the second reason is that as I mentioned this is for winter so it's going to get a lot colder out than what it is right now and having this tarp shelter will allow you to have a man-made uh, shelter essentially that's not going to leak, that's not going to let out hot air, that's going to keep you quite airtight. Uh, overall, like I was saying, it's really kind of weird to go from my natural made shelters to a man-made type of use in a shelter because this thing, it keeps your shelter so much warmer and it makes your shelters a lot better. That's why I have been wanting to bring one out, or this is the reason why I brought it out, specifically for winter use. I don't know if I'd use something this thick gauged in the summer, because the summer does get warm here, so I'd probably go to something slightly uh, thinner, but overall this is a really great option for winter. So the other pieces, I'm not sure if you guys can really even see it from here, but I'm just running a recycled firefighter lanyard on this side and then this little piece which you guys won't really be able to see too much that's a good thing is this is a prototype piece that i'm working on for the company you guys will see more about that you guys will see its own video eventually once i get all the bugs worked out that's just a prototype that i'm guys, running out here like that new kind of change up and now to actually get close to the pack so we can go in and show you guys that you guys a couple close up you guys couldn't really see the knife that is the lt right camp muck I'm really liking that knife uh, and the Schrade SHF 42D. Just to show you guys that knife a little bit closer, or those knives a little bit closer to the rifle and the axe over there. So to get into the first thing that you guys can see here, and probably to get into this main compartment, is the buck saw, the 24 inch buck saw. I ran this in the last video, but honestly I would highly recommend if you guys are 
it all going out in the winter for a long-term situation, um, shelter will definitely be like in your house. So you're going to need, I would highly encourage carrying a boy axe and a 24 to 30 inch buck saw, as I recommended in the last one, but for this one, for sure, because you will definitely need to build some type of shelter, even if it isn't with a tarp or getting into else. other things. So the next part is I'm carrying this kind of, this is what I consider just my overhaul dump kind of pouch, where if I don't have a really good dedicated place to put things like sharpening rods, extra batteries, extra ferro rods for the exotac. Uh, there's just a few things that I carry that I don't really have a great place to put them. And so that's kind of what this is for. As well, since this is a winter pack, uh, at least here in Alaska, and I think most places that get winter, like real winter, it actually does get dark here, and we have pretty short amounts of sunlight, so I incorporated the Streamlight Stylus Pro, uh, and I do have the ProTac 2L on body, so that's why the stylus is on here. It's a less powerful light, but it's really meant as a backup. And in addition to this light, I have, I think, two sets or four batteries in here. You guys can see just a little bit of extra paracord in here. Uh, this is the sharpening rod here. And there's a heat pack here because it is winter. And the extra batteries are down in there. From that, uh, going along with the tarp, I also carry a Mylar blanket. I think the tarp and Mylar blanket make an excellent combination for uh, overall shelter craft. I think you can make a killer winter shelter that'll keep you very warm if you use the tarp and Mylar blanket. So that is one of the reasons why I've incorporated the Mylar blanket. You guys blanket. noted last time I had a in-the-pack knife, and the same is true with this time. This is the Mora Garber. This is also another knife I'm really liking, and I would probably keep in rotation with the Schrade SEHF 42D. Though the reason why the Schrade was the primary belt knife was because it is a few, I think around an inch and a half longer in blade length than this one. Though this one is certainly stout. Um, I just like the Schrade because it had that just a little bit more reach in it, and that allowed it to you know, span larger pieces of wood. Three pieces to this pack. I'm not even going to pull them out, but uh, well, I might pull them out. Is the MSR Stowaway Seagull stainless steel pot um, and the GSI Glacier stainless steel cup and the, uh, what is it, Nalgene. And those are classics. Of course, do keep in mind that the um, tripod that you guys are on or watching also goes in this pack and so does the camera but it does not go into this particular pouch but the tripod set up that pretty much fills this entire pack to the brim it's a quintessential piece it's been a part of the other one as well that is the mcq bushcraft slash now kind of me modifying it uh, leather pouch full of fire creating goodies uh, has many, many different ways from flint and steel, ferro rods, and many different things that will catch a spark, catch a flame. Uh, that pretty much is like a guaranteed fire in a pouch. <laughs> a lot of shelter building materials. Uh, that is definitely new for me, but I'm really getting into it. So I'm also carrying in here, it's going to be a little bit hard to see because the pack's a little bit snugged up but uh, there's around 50 feet, I can show this right, there's around 50 feet of paracord down in here, and there might be a little bit more than that, maybe around 70 right now, but I use that for building the different shelters. I find when you're building with man-made objects, you tend to use a lot more paracord, um, but that's okay, I definitely have enough to account So then, for it. the last big pouch here is where I carry all my camera equipment slash some snacks. You guys can see some more cliff bars I'm just sitting in here. I really do love cliff bars. Uh, of course, this is where, where the Nikon would be. The thing that's making this video right now, that's where this would be. Uh, but you guys can see GoPro Hero 4 is in here. Uh, the Rainfly is in here. I carry the Rainfly year around because uh, we can still get freezing rain here. And if it's coming down really hard, uh, freezing rain or snow, it has essentially the same effect as just normal rain. So it can equally get your pack just as wet as normal The reason rain. why I still carry that, and that's what's in there. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I think there's nothing in this pouch. It does have a zipper on it. 
I don't want to say there's necessarily nothing in here. There's a little bit of, you guys can see, there's a little bit of like a snapping in there, uh, and that helps protect the camera from any frontal impacts to it. So that is what's in there, but nothing that I, really I apologize for not being able to rotate this around. This uh, tarp down here makes it really hard to rotate it in this confined space. But down here on this side pouch, this is the right hand side one. So this is where I keep around approximately 200 rounds of ammunition. I have CCI CB shorts and I have CCI uh, standard velocity and then I have hyper velocity by Remington. Uh, I also have a blast match in here. And this is where I carry my primary amount of hand and toe warmers. Uh, they may be a little bit more luxurious. I'm sure you guys are going to give me some hell for having those. But I really do like, especially when it gets really cold out, I like having uh, hand warmers in the mittens. Uh, the Mucklucks, I found, uh, as far as toe warmer use, they're pretty self-sufficient. I've never really needed to integrate toe warmers into my Mucklucks. But I have them there because there may come a day when I actually do need to. Winding this down. Uh, well, I'm going to go my way. But uh, it's just the eye block on this side. Hopefully I can show you guys. I have the brunt and compass right here, which is what this is. And then I just have a standard eye fast right there. Uh, I think I mentioned in my last video, I really do encourage having a eye fast or some kind of medical piece, especially if you're intending to be out for a long period of time because if the longer you're out, the higher the probability you have of injuring yourself. And I mean, you can use axes, guns, knives. These are a lot of tools that can, uh, if mismanaged, even for a moment, can seriously. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed that nice little showing of my kit. Uh, definitely let me know in the comment section below if there's any recommendations that you guys personally recommend for it. Uh, and let me know what you guys think of it. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this new style of video, kind of. I'm trying new things and uh, trying to be a little bit more creative with them. And like I said, let me know what you guys think of this kit setup. I think it's actually pretty good, uh, in my opinion. I'm really excited to try out more of these tarp shelters. And like I said, having personally used tarps now, I can really attest to the fact of how effective they are in a colder climate. Uh, and I'll definitely show that in my tarp shelter that I built. Uh, other than that, guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and like I said, let me know what your thoughts are on this. And anyways, guys, I'm out.